Now for the half tons. Notice how smoothly and easily the Chevrolet backs up this grade. Now watch the Ford. That's called power hop, the result of a badly outdated suspension design. So our next victim is going to be the Rochester Model B out of our 66 C20 Chevrolet. This was the go-to carburetor for Chevrolet six cylinders back in the 50s and 60s. And some other models had them on as well. On the cars they were called a BC because they had automatic choke on the side. There was also a BV which I don't even know offhand what that was exactly. But I want to get this soaking in the gas. As you can see how grody it is, it needs it. So let's start tearing it apart. And by all means, please take pictures before you start. Something I really need to make for myself is a seat remover tool. Screwdrivers just never cut it. But for now, how about a spoon? Perfect.
Okay, I think I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the bucket of gas. Um, if I feel like once I'm done cleaning it, if I need to remove the arms, then I will do that later. The ones that I can, anyway, you know. But, um, the choke, choke valve feels good. The throttle feels fine. You Again, you want to check for slop in the throttle shaft. If it's completely worn out, you'll have a vacuum leak. Um, this one feels okay. The gaps around the, the valve in the bore look good. So I'm going to leave that in place. No, no sense in taking that out if I don't have to. Gather everything up, throw it in the bucket, let it soak for a few days, and then we will finish cleaning it after that. It's your secret weapon, even when they think you're unarmed. So get Ideal's new Roy Rogers Quick Shooter hat at your favorite store today, and you'll always be ready for anything. Ask for Ideal's new Roy Rogers Quick Shooter hat. Well, it's been about a week, and I swished it real good. Let's see if we uh, did any... If we did any good here. Well, there's still a lot of junk on it, that's for sure. But maybe a quick brushing and it'll come off. company Zep has a lot of industrial cleaners out there and I would really like to try one of those for doing this job but I have about oh, a quart or a little less simple green left so I'm gonna use it get all my little parts in here man I got a lot of did get a lot of sludge off this thing was so completely covered in junk. All right, the heat's on. It's still not all the way warmed up. I'm going to run it for maybe an hour, hour and a half. So here are the parts after the gas treatment and the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, you know, compared to what it was when it went in, it's night and day difference. I would be interested in more of an industrial cleaner, um, something much stronger. I know guys even run, run this stuff in their cleaners in gasoline, and I really wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, you know, don't use the heater, and I'd probably put it outside. But really, there is no ignition source to cause a fire. Um, you think about, you know, think about gas-powered chainsaws and weed eaters and all that. You know, the gas tank is, r plastic gas tank is right next to the exhaust. And when's the last time you ever heard of a chainsaw blowing up? So, anyway... Off subject. Um, I've tried this throwing detergent in here two times now. Um, that was a tip I got online that it would scrub in the cleaner and it probably does but on the cast aluminum pieces you get an awful lot of it's like where it it congregates in certain spots and just sets up a crust. 
I'm not saying that's bad. I mean, I can easily get it off of there. But, uh, I don't know. Anyway, we'll hose these down with, and it didn't do too great on the soot inside the Venturi or, you know, anywhere, anywhere around the valves, the throttle plate and the choke plate. But, hey, the greasy hunk of junk I had, you know, 90, 95, 90%, 97% of that is gone. Um, did a pretty good job on all the little parts. Everything's clean, so we'll call it a success, but I'm going to continue, if I want to continue using that machine for this job, I'm going to continue searching for that perfect formula. So here's my dilemma on this carburetor. I've got it mostly clean. There's still some extremely stubborn carbon buildup in the Venturi and in the throttle body. But otherwise, it's looking pretty good. This thing was so nasty. And you saw that going in. But my dilemma is the CAD plating on this looks terrible. And while I'm not going for just an immaculate restoration, uh, I would like this either to be all aluminum or replace the CAD plating. And we're not going to do that. Um, if someone out there watching this has ever put Eastwood's uh, CAD paint system on a carburetor and it has held up, let me know. Well, even if it didn't hold up, let me know. That's equally important. Um, but I'd be real curious about that. But I'm not going to spend $50 for the kit plus the clear coat plus shipping to find out if it fails or not. So I'm going to strip this old plating off um, with muriatic acid and we'll just go with the bare aluminum and then on these steel parts, these levers, I'll clear coat those so they don't rust and that's just how it's going to have to be for this. So I'm going to mix muriatic acid with water. You want a 10 to 1 ratio. I have 40 ounces of water so I'm going to put 4 ounces of acid in here. Something like that. Should go without saying, use the proper caution, wear gloves, well ventilated, this is going to bubble and give off fumes. Then I have water and baking soda to neutralize what's going on. And then I'll do a final rinse in this clean water. So we'll just put the first part in. for about half an hour. Even though I have the door open, I started a fan, it's still smelling up the shop, so I had to take it outside, and I hi highly recommend you do the same. But look what kind of job it does. That is looking a whole lot better. Cleaned all the rust, all the carbon. There's still just the tiniest shade of zinc plating on there, but I bet you I can even brush that off. So let's put it in the soda water. Let that eat on that. Put the bowl in here. I'm going to take that outside.
clean water rinse and then I'll blow it off real good with the blow gun. Look how nasty that acid is. Now your aluminum parts naturally will get etched along with the uh, zinc coating and the steel. It'll take rust off, it'll take everything off, um, and it'll make a soft texture if you leave it very long. In fact, the acid solution turns gray the longer you leave it in there because of the aluminum that's coming off. So what I do, um, just to clean all the, the loose junk off, looks like that could go a little longer in it actually. Yeah, that's all loose. I'm just going to put it back in the ultrasonic cleaner for a little while longer. It's just, I've just got plain water going, and that'll get all the loose stuff off. And if you're thinking, boy, this is a lot of stuff and nonsense for just a carburetor, well, check out that result. Oh, yeah. This is the poorest class I've had in a long, long time. Most of you have no foundation at all. Now the trouble's with your attitude. You don't pay enough attention in class. All right, I think we're looking pretty schnazzy. I coated everything with some satin Rust-Oleum Clear. Should keep the rust on the steel pieces at bay for a little while and it gave the aluminum a nice sheen. Now if you order a uh, carburetor, or a rebuilt carburetor, more than likely it's going to come in bare aluminum and look roughly like this. Uh, that's because the, the rebuilders don't want to pay the expense of having it replated, obviously. Um, you know, and that's up to you. If you're going for 100% factory restoration, you'll want to take it to a plater and get it re-plated. But we're not going to worry about that on this project. And in fact, I think this, I like the looks of this better than a gold carburetor anyway. But uh, that's me. But that acid really, I mean that, that soot and that carbon buildup did not want to come off. And that acid really cleaned it up. Okay, there we go. Let's go throw it back on the truck. Oh, whoops. Shoot. Okay, I'm going to be using the high grade repair kit for this carburetor. It is number 492 made in USA by standard. Should be a good kit. Um, new floats are also available. Mine are fine so I don't need that. And I've just got it all laid out. 
old parts I don't think I need, all the other old parts that I do need. I like to have my original manual laid out for reference, and then I've got standards reference if we need it. So we're going to just dive in here, and the first thing I'm going to do is simply put the idle screw back in the base. I'm going to lightly run that all the way down. We don't want to jam it in there. So that's where it bottomed out, and I'm going to go one and a half back out. Half, one, one and a half. And that is a good starting point. Since we're working right here, I'm going to put the vacuum port for the vacuum advance on here. Just a little dab of Permatex. Now this kit comes with two gaskets to go between the bowl and the throttle body. And it's very obvious which one you need when you put them on there. Okay, I need to replace the accelerator pump, or the plunger as they call it. So I need to get this little spring clip off the top. Right there. Spring's kind of cattywampus. clean this up real quick. Okay, I just brushed it off real good. Wiped her down. Now we're going to snap this clip back on and away we go. I'm also just barely, barely going to put a little lube on the cup just so I don't put it in the in the well dry okay we're gonna put the plunger in there or the accelerator pump whatever you want to call it gonna make sure the spring stays centered on here got this little clip and that goes down there and right down to the throttle shaft linkage okay Okay, now we're going to work on the accelerator pump discharge uh, assembly. So the first thing we're going to do, the large ball that comes with the kit, we're going to put that down in there. And then you should have a copper colored spring. And then that little T clip, pin, spring retainer thingy. There are little grooves on both sides of this cavity. 
Let me get my pliers on there. Just want to reseat that down in that cavity. There we go. Just nice and flush with the top of the bowl there. Now this lever is what they call the throttle kicker. And if you took yours off, you just want to get this spring hooked back on that boss there. And then the other end, wrap it around so it's around the lever. That will end up against your idle screw right there. Now we are going to drop the new gasket on the air horn. Get it around there. There we go. Around that. Okay, we're going to put the power piston in. Just ever so slightly bit of lube on here. Goes down in this cavity. Maybe like that. Okay, what I'm going to do is a bit backwards from the book, but this is the main well support, and I'm going to drop my ball in there. I've got a small spring in the kit. Put that in the plug, and tighten that down. Make sure that spring is centered on the ball. So this should be spring-loaded. Now we have a well housing filter. The crimped end just goes down like that. What did I do with my... Let's just take a Torx here. Get that down in there a little ways. Alright, now I'm just going to center this all. It's all nicely indexed for you. And we'll tighten it down. All right, and now the metering jet. There she be. Okay, have a new gasket on our new seat. Drop that down in there. needle. And of course we just put the float back using the pin. Well if you have Chevrolet's handy little float gauge. You can just put her on there and it'll tell you right away.
but for us hicks we got to use a ruler and the value in the instructions is um, 1 and 9 30 seconds to the top of each float and uh, it looks good one past the eight there and that's with the gasket in place then we need to measure the float drop so we turn it over let them drop push up against the gasket and we need an inch and three quarters if anything it is just tiny bit maybe a 30 second over three quarters is at this 24 and it might just be one past check this side this is the same way so all I would do is bend the center tab squeeze it a little bit more I mean just tiny tiny bit and that will prevent these from falling quite so far down okay we're going to put the air horn on to do that we've got to rotate the kick lever out of the way drop this down can be a little finicky getting this gasket over the accelerator pump assembly go does anyone remember which one the tag was on I don't let's see I'll put it on this one. That way it can be easily seen from the carburetor side of the engine. Well there we go. Very simple carburetor. Very simple. It takes far more time to clean them up than rebuild them. At least when they're as gross as this one was. Got a few parts left over on our new pile. I'll be using this and this. Everything else is for models with a choke. Um, so let's go throw it on the engine. Nothing upsets a pickle lover more than a dull, soggy pickle. Pickle lovers always insist on the proud pickle. Heinz. No compromise, no shortcuts, no soggy pickle.
Okay, the one thing I always wanted to show, and I just kept forgetting, is this little screw head right here. A little spring-loaded standard hit slot head there. And let me work the throttle here for you, if I can find a spot. <laughs> you can see it going up and down. That they call the idle, um, idle air valve. And... They say you want 50 thousandths gap underneath that, okay? So just make sure that's there, and if you turn on it, you can reset it. Just get that adjusted right. Well, there you go, folks. She's back installed, and we're another step closer to firing this engine up. I'm going to figure out something better for the choke cable, because I do not like what's going on there. And then, I don't know if you noticed, or if I showed it, but this clip that holds the linkage together at this pivot point just snapped right in half. I think I have some more of these at home, so I will bring one of those. But there you go. So thanks for checking this video out. We'll keep working on it, and I'll bring you along with me. Bye for now. This is a road clearance test. If that wooden post were a boulder, a stump, or a high road center, it would present no problem for a Chevrolet. But for a Ford, with its low-slung front axle, it could be disastrous.